All right, the book of 2 Chronicles, if you would, 2 Chronicles 27 tonight, or this morning, 2 Chronicles 27. We're going to talk about King Jotham here this morning, King Jotham, uh, another one of the good kings. Uh, we uh, have a few in the, in the southern kingdom of Judah, but here is another one of the good kings, King Jotham and his prepared life. Now, of course, as uh, people do, they, they prepare their lives for different things. Of course, uh, we always tell our kids and people tell their kids, get a good education, you know, prepare yourself for the future. There's, uh, uh, we, we plan to do other things, you know, to, to uh, maybe be a doctor. There's certain things you have to do to be an accountant, mechanic, pilot, whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, you're going to have to get some education. You're going to have to make some plans, prepare yourself for that particular vocation or prepare yourself for the future. There's a lot of people who do not, however, prepare properly for their future and they maybe struggle through life. But what I want to encourage you about today is to prepare your hearts to follow the Lord. That's what King uh, Jotham did. He prepared his heart. He had a prepared life, uh, a life of faith, uh, a faith that set him apart, a faith that was steady and determined. And uh, we're going to study these verses today. It's really only uh, a short chapter here, Second Chronicles 27, dealing with the life of Jotham. But I believe to be something, of course, that's very interesting, and I believe it can be very helpful to us today when we study King Joe, and especially for our young people here today. As you're growing up, uh, I, I pray that you will prepare your heart to serve the Lord uh, all of your life. Uh, there's no reason for you to waste part of your life and then come back to God or then to come to God. The greatest thing you could do with your life is, is to, to just give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ when you're young and just serve Him all of your life. Prepare your life, prepare your heart to just love Him, to serve Him, to follow Him all of your life. That's what King Jotham did. And I want to encourage all of us today to follow the Lord with our life, no matter how old we are, but especially those that are younger here today, that you would prepare your life uh, to follow the Lord. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles 27 and verse 1 that Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years. Now, uh, he only reigned 16. His daddy reigned 52, if you remember, Uzziah. So it was a short reign. He died when he was 41, uh, a, a young man, really. But uh, he did start when he was 25. He reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jerusha or Jerusha the daughter of Zadak. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord, and the people did yet corruptly. There's a lot in that verse right there. Verse number three, he built the high gate of the house of the Lord. And on the wall of Ophel, he built much. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah and in the forest. He built castles and towers. He fought also with the king of the Ammonites and prevailed against them. And the children of Ammon gave him the same year a hundred talents of silver and 10,000 measures of wheat and 10,000 of barley. So much did the children of Ammon pay unto him both the second year and the third. So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars, his ways, lo, are they, not, are they written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah? He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And Jotham slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David. And Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. And then we'll find out about Ahaz later on, but he was not a good king. He did not do that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. But today is Jotham and a prepared life. And I want to show you from the scriptures that we read here this morning about a prepared life and how we should all, uh, of course, follow the Lord. But as young people here today, we should want to prepare our lives to serve God. Number one, a prepared life begins with obedience. A prepared life begins with 
obedience. The Bible tells us in verse number 2, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. In other words, he was obedient to the Lord. He followed the Lord. He knew what the Lord wanted him to do, and he did that. What a great testimony that is to be able to say of someone, they are doing that or did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Isn't that a great testimony to have this morning? They did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. You know, there's a lot of people in our world today that wonder whether or not God's on their side. Am I right? They wonder whether God's on their side. Let me tell you something. We ought not to be wondering about whether or not God's on our side. We ought to be uh, wondering about whether we are on God's side or not. That's what we need to be saying. Am I on God's side or not? Not necessarily is God on my side, but am I on God's side? And I'm going to tell you, King Jotham was on God's side. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. See, a life of faith, a prepared life must have a beginning. It must have a point of origin. There was a time in King Jotham's life, and I will say to you, I believe it was when he was a lot younger than 25, of course. There was a time in King Jotham's life when he made up his mind that he was going to follow the Lord with his life. It could have been when he uh, was 10. It might have been when he was 8, I don't know. It could have been when he was 12 or 13, 14. We don't know the answer to that question, but I believe it it was a lot earlier than 25 because at 25 he took over as king and did that which was right, right in the sight of the Lord because he had prepared his ways to serve the Lord, and so it took place at a much younger age. He, he followed the Lord, now he, but he did not become prideful as his father Uzziah did at the end of his reign. King Jotham stayed true to the Lord all of his life. We finally again see a king here that stayed true to the Lord all of his life. See, there's going to come a time in our life for all of us, especially young people. Listen to me closely this morning. There's going to come a time in our life when we're going to say in our heart, I'm not going there. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to have that in my life. I'm going to have the ways of God in my life. And that's what King Jotham did. He said, I'm I'm going to have that in my life, and and I'm I'm going to follow the ways of the Lord. My dad, and and we'll talk more about this in a moment, was a great example to him most of the time, but he was also a bad example. And he said, I'm not going there. Jotham never became prideful before God, like Uzziah, his father, did. He said, Lord, I'm not so much worried about you being on my side. My concern is that I'm on your side. I want to be on your side. I'm going to tell you, a walk of a prepared life, a walk of faith begins with obedience. The choices that we face every day. Do I follow God or do I conform to this world? Do I live like God wants me to live or do I live like the world wants me to live? The Bible says in Romans 12, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I tell you this morning, Jotham, A great king. All of the Lord, his his prepared life started with obedience. And that's where a prepared life starts. I'm going to do it God's way. God's way. Secondly, a prepared life is strengthened by other people's faith. By the faith of other people. A prepared life is strengthened by the faith of other people. Now notice that it says here in verse number 2, that uh, uh, it says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Uzziah had done or did. Uh, uh, His father Uzziah, again reigned for 52 years in Judah, was a great king for most of it. There at the end, of course, he became prideful and God struck him down with leprosy. Now, uh, we we know that. But uh, for the most part of his reign, he was a great king. He, the Bible even tells us he did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. And Jotham saw this in his father. And he saw what an obedient person looks like. He saw what a, a, a person of faith looks like. He saw uh, uh, that God's favor rested on his father. And that's what he wanted in his life. The Bible tells us, you know, as iron sharpens iron, uh, so uh, another man can sharpen another man. And I believe that's what happened in in Jotham's life. You see, there's two thoughts under this that we can learn by other people's faith and other people's lives. There's there's a thought here that we can learn by what they did right. We can learn by what they did right. And Jotham learned from his father Uzziah what he did right. You see, Jotham did have a godly father 
And the Bible gives us his mother's name, which they all, we don't have all that for all of the kings. We have it for some. But I believe when God gives us the name of the mother, you can count on it. She was a godly mother. A godly mother. I'm going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, and you may be a single parent here today. You may be a mother and father, and that's all well and good, but be godly. Be godly. Be a godly father. Be a godly mother. Uh, uh, to your children so that they can see God, so that they can learn from your faith and they, they can learn from you and they can follow the Lord in their life. I believe that, that uh, he, he had this godly mother and this godly father in his life and, and he saw that and he learned from them. He saw it in his mom and dad, and and he prepared himself uh, uh, to do that. He learned from his dad. He learned from his mom all of the great things about serving God and being obedient to God. And he said, that's what I want for my life. He looked at their example and followed him. But I will tell you this much as well. You can learn from the mistakes of others too. You can look at other people's lives, and you can see where they made mistakes, and you can stay away from that. You can say, and, and you can even show this to your kids. This is one of the things that I've done in my life in raising my children is I have, I've showed them uh, 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 other people of faith who have done right. I've showed them other people who have made mistakes. And I said, listen, you don't have to go there. You do not have to go there in your life. See, after Uzziah was strong, the Bible tells us. This is Joseph, Jotham's father. After Uzziah was strong, what did he do? He went into the temple. And began to burn incense on the altar of incense. Now, you know very well that the king was not supposed to do that. Only the priests were supposed to do that. And the high priest was to do it morning and evening on the, on the altar of incense. And let me tell you something. He walked in there and he said, I'm going to do what I want to do, whether you priests like it and whether God likes it or not. And God struck him down with leprosy. Now, if you were in the adult Sunday school class this morning, we also found out something else very interesting that we don't see here in, in 2 Chronicles and 2 Kings. But if you study Amos and you study Zechariah, uh, uh, there was an earthquake that took place. And that there was a great earthquake that took place when, when Uzziah walked into that temple and burned all, uh, incense on the altar of incense and God struck him down with leprosy. But there was also a great earthquake that took place place in, in Judah at that time. And, and Jotham learned from this. He, he followed his dad as long as, as his dad followed the Lord, but when it got to his dad's pride trip, he did not follow him. He learned from his mistake. He did not want to go there. Jotham never entered the temple of the Lord and said, I'm going to burn incense on the altar of incense. He never did that. He learned from his daddy's mistakes. Now, you can learn from other people. And, and, and all of us, uh, and by the way, somebody's watching you all the time. Somebody's watching you all the time. I, uh, uh, my mom gave me a, a little devotional that she had uh, read this week. Uh, and uh, it had something to do with the kings and the queens. And, and I thought it was a very interesting uh, little statement in, in one of the devotionals that said to somebody else, you are their king or their queen. And they're watching you. And they're watching you. Somebody else is watching you at all times. Now, sometimes that's scary, isn't it? Uh, I, have to, I have to be on my toes all the time. That's why I've told you before that I don't blow the horn and stick my fist in people's face when I'm going down the road. I want to sometimes. But I've told you what I thought about that, right? That about the time I do that, this person's going to come and visit our church on Sunday morning. They're going to look up at me up here and they're going to say, I saw that guy somewhere this week. Where did I see him at? Oh, he was the guy that did like this to me and was mouthing off to me when I cut in front of him. So I don't do that. I try to calm down from doing that. I want to, but I don't do it. Because somebody's always watching. Somebody's always watching. You got to be on your toes. You got to be on your toes. We can watch somebody and see what they do good and follow that. We can see what they do wrong and say, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. And I, I, I think that's very important. We can learn in that regard. Thirdly, this morning, a prepared life will set you apart. A prepared life will set you apart. Now, I want you to notice this very interesting little phrase at the end of verse 2 where it says, and the people 
did yet corruptly. Okay? We have Jotham described in verse number 2 as doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And at the end of that verse, we have a, a, a description of the other people in the nation of Judah doing yet corruptly, sinning against God. And so what we have here is in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, King Jotham continued his walk with God. He continued his walk in, with a prepared life that he was going to serve God no matter what the world did, no matter what other people did. I'm going to serve God. If I have to swim upstream, I am going to serve God. And folks, that's exactly what we need to do because we live in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. We live in the midst of sin all around us. And let me tell you something, we just need to continue to shine as light. Be the light of the world. Be the salt of the earth, as Jesus said we are. And you know what? We can do right. No matter what other people are doing. We can do right. And we can follow God. And, and Jotham's story is just like that. And folks, we need to stand up like Jotham did in the midst of cor corruptness, corruption. And, and we need to stand up and still serve the Lord. Put your name in that verse right there where it says all the other people doing corruptly, and then put your name at the beginning, where it says, and he, put your name there, did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Boy, isn't that a great testimony? It would not be a great testimony to hear that. And put your name in there, did right in the sight of the Lord, even though a lot of other people did not do right in the sight of the Lord. They did corruptly. See, he, he, was, he stood out apart. And I'm going to tell you, a prepared life, a life of faith, a life that follows God is going to set you apart. Is going to set you apart. But you just say, praise God, and you just keep on following Him and serving Him. You're going to be persecuted. We read that earlier. All that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But that's all right. That's not a surprise. That's not a surprise. Jesus said they were going to do it. And let me tell you something this morning. We're just going to keep on serving God. Fourthly, a prepared life will cause you to serve God and to serve others. A prepared life will cause you to serve God and will cause you to serve others. It said there in verse number 3 and 4, it talking about his building. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord. Again, you know why he had to rebuild the house of the Lord? Because of that great earthquake that took place. Uh, there was some building that had to go on. So he did that. He did not enter the temple of the Lord and say, I'm going to burn all, uh, incense on the altar of incense. No, he said, I am going to serve God and I'm going to serve others and we're going to repair the temple so that other people can go in and worship Him, so that other people can go in and serve Him. And that's what he did. A prepared life will cause you to serve God and to serve others. He served God. He went to work for God. He did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. He used His time, His talent, His money, His treasure to serve God in so many different ways. He, he repaired the temple of the Lord. He uh, built cities in the mountains of Judah and in the forest. He built castles and towers uh, uh, to, to uh, help uh, with the protection of the people. He thought about others. He did not think about Himself. A lot of people get some power and get some money and all they think about is themselves. Let me tell you something, we need to be thinking about others. How we can serve others with what God has blessed us with. A life of faith will cause me, a life of prepared life, a life of faith, a life of obedience will cause me to want to serve God, but also to serve others, to lift up others uh, uh, to the Lord and, and to do that. Listen, find something that God wants you to do for other people and do it. Do it. Jotham had prepared his life. I, again, I believe as a, as a young person, he had prepared his life and he said, listen, I want to just follow God with my life. I want to give all my time, my talent, my treasure. And I'm not even necessarily talking about uh, being in full-time work. I'm talking about whatever work God calls you into that you're just going to follow Him. You've prepared your life to just follow Him. Too many people see... Uh, uh, they grow up in church and then when they get out of uh, uh, high school, they get out of church. And then uh, eventually they may come back later on somehow, some way. Well, why do you have to do that? A prepared life, fifthly, will bring you closer to God. It will bring you closer to God. I like verse number six, and this is what we're going to use mainly tonight in our uh, message tonight on Jotham. It says, He became mighty. 
because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. He became mighty. Mighty. Uh, he was, again, concerned about the things of God, concerned about the things of others, uh, concerned about the temple of God, the house of God. He prepared his ways before the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, when you're uh, a baby, and, and we got the twins here today, and praise God, and, 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 and I hope they'll grow up in church all their life. Uh, uh, when my kids were babies, guess where they were? They were in church. And many of you the same way. Many of you the same way. Uh, when, you're, when your children were babies, they were in church. And praise God. And just bring them to church. But what happens, though, see, mom and dad brings them to church. That's all well and good. But there has to come a time in each of their lives where they make up their mind they're going to serve God. Where they're going to serve God. Where, where they uh, 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 choose for themselves that they're going to serve God. And it's called preparing your ways to serve the Lord. Making up your mind that I'm going to follow God and I'm not going to go this way. I'm not going to spend uh, uh, two years, three years, ten years, twenty years sowing my wild oats and doing my thing my way. No, I'm going to use all of those years for God. That's what I want to do with my life. That's what Jotham said. Uh, uh, he was 25 years old when he took over to be the king. But I'm going to tell you, and he became mighty through his 16-year reign. It says, because he prepared his ways before the Lord, but it was not when he turned 25 that he said, okay, I think I'm going to prepare my ways for the Lord. It was when he was younger. His mom and dad got him started. But then he made that decision. He said, I'm going to get with the program here. And I'm going to serve God. And ladies and gentlemen, One of the greatest things we can do, bring our kids to Sunday school, bring them to church. Bring them on Wednesday night. Get them into the Scriptures. Teach them a life of prayer. Teach them, give them a, a place to serve God in some way. Show them how to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. Be faithful to church again. Uh, uh, serve, serve people in some other way. And then we will pray for them. We will pray for them that they will then choose to follow the Lord with their life. Now, I used to be a youth director. I'm, I'm probably too old to do that now. <laughs> not really, not really. I'm really not. Uh, uh, I really love talking to teenagers. I, I enjoyed the time that I, when I was a youth director, I enjoyed that time. Because it was, it was when I was a teenager at, at the age of 14 that uh, I got saved and I made up my mind I was just going to serve the Lord. Now, I am far from perfect. Far from perfect. But I'm going to tell you, I made up my mind that I was just going to follow the ways of the Lord. There's, and I'm 56 years old now. We were talking about uh, on the porch this morning, you know, who had hair and who didn't have hair. All, us men, you know, this is, this is it's kind of silly, I guess. But, uh, you know, that's what we were talking about. And uh, uh, we were admiring Ray Barker's hair and, and uh, 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 that and uh, that kind of thing. And, you know, said, man. And, and, and you know, we, you know, just kind of having fun out there. Well, I'm not ashamed to tell you I'm 56 years old, and I'm far from perfect, but I'm going to tell you, from the time I was 14 to the time of 56 years old now, 42 years, and, and again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect, but I, I have not wandered off from the Lord and sowed my wild oats and did my own thing my own way. I've always wanted to follow the Lord. Always wanted to follow the Lord. Uh, I want to be an example to my family, uh, uh, to my children. And, and I'm thankful today that my children want to serve the Lord. And, and I'm telling you, it, it's, it's one of the greatest things going. But my children have to make up their mind that they're going to prepare their hearts to serve the Lord. But I, I made up my mind a long time ago before I uh, had met my wife, before I had met my children. Uh, 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 I made up my mind a long time ago when I was 14 years old that I wanted to serve the Lord. Now, uh, Jotham had a dad that uh, set an example for him spiritually. My dad was not even saved when I got saved. But my mother was. And my mother set a great example for me. Godly example for me. And so I say to you, you know, you say, well, there's no dad involved. Well, let me tell you something. 
just be godly. Pray for your kids. They'll make, and you just pray they'll make up their mind one day that they want to serve Him. And then if they make up their mind they're not, you just keep praying they'll come back to God. And don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. Jotham prepared his heart to seek the Lord. I, I want to encourage these young people that are here today, these teenagers that are here today, to make up your mind. You may be 12 years old, 13 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old, ever how old you are this morning, you make up your mind you're going to serve God. Do what King Jotham did. Prepare your ways before the Lord. Say, I'm going to learn from my dad because he, he was a godly man, but then I'm going to also learn from his mistakes that I'm not going to be prideful. I'm not going to lift myself up. I want to be humble before the Lord all of my days. And, and he, he had a godly mother. Uh, and, and she was, uh, I guarantee, a great influence in his life. And boy, when, it, when he turned 25 years old and his daddy died, those people called on him to be the next king. It was, it was him. They were glad for 16 years that they had a king by the name of King Jotham. Because he was a man that did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. He was a man who had prepared his ways to follow the Lord. Let's live for the Lord like King Jotham.